Hello friends, welcome to today's video on data science. The topic for today is confusion matrix. Confusion matrix is a very important concept in machine learning. And everyone that works with data science must be very, very clear on it and how to use it. So let's go ahead and see what is confusion matrix and how it is used. Confusion matrix is a mechanism to measure the performance of machine learning classification algorithms where output can be of two or more classes. So let's say I have a set of data and there are some records in it. And I want to classify those records into two classes. So I go ahead and I use a classification algorithm. I use that algorithm on my data and predict the categories of my records. While doing so, my algorithm, while it may make some predictions correctly, it may also make some incorrect predictions. The confusion matrix helps us to categorize all the different predictions properly so that we can then understand how well is the algorithm and the model that I have built using my algorithm are really performing. The number of cases which fall under true positive and true negative are correctly classified by the machine learning algorithm, while the ones which fall under false positive and false negative have been incorrectly classified. So what does that mean? So here on the right side, I have a template of how a confusion matrix looks like. So on the top row, I have actual value, positive and negative. And then on the left hand side column, the very first column, I have predicted value, positive and negative. So whenever I'm predicting using an algorithm, irrespective of what the final prediction is, the record has an actual value attached to it, right, which never changes. So my algorithm is either able to predict that actual value correctly or it is not. So whenever my predicted value and my actual value match, that is a good classification, right? I'm classifying the actual values correctly. But whenever they don't match, that's when I'm making an error. So true positive and true negative, the two values which are highlighted in green, those are the cases, those are the records which have been correctly predicted. They are matching their actual value. Whereas the records which fall under false positive and false negative, which are here marked in red color, have been classified wrongly. May not seem very clear from here, so let's go ahead and look at an example and then it will make sense. So let's assume that I built a classifier, which is a machine learning model, to distinguish spam emails from non-spam emails. So this is a very common and well-known classification problem right that even maybe gmail also uses to classify our emails into good emails and spam emails right so let's say we have built our own classification model to help us do that now i have 100 emails and i use my newly built model to classify these 100 emails. After I do that, in my results, I find that 20 spam emails were correctly classified as spam and 40 non-spam emails were correctly classified as non-spam. So those two are my true positive and my true negative, right? Where the actual value was also spam and my classifier also predicted it to be spam. 
that is my true positive 20. And then I have my true negative where the actual value was that also that it's not spam and my predicted value was also that it's not spam and there were 40 such emails. So my true positive and true negative are populated according to that in this table. Till here my algorithm is working fine but then 30 non-spam emails were incorrectly classified as spam right so there were 30 good emails there was nothing wrong with that but somehow my machine learning model classified them as spam so that goes into my false positive box right you can see that in red it's populated as 30 so it was predicted as positive the positive in this case is um, spam right so they were predicted as spam but they're actually not spam right so it's false positive and then 10 spam emails were incorrectly classified as non-spam right so there were 10 emails which were actually bad spam emails but somehow my classification model predicted them to be non-spam so that goes into false negative which are 10 of them so that's how the output of my classification algorithm which has two output classes of spam and non-spam can be distributed across the four boxes of a confusion matrix and then i can derive a number of different conclusions from this data In hypothesis testing, we frequently refer to type 1 and type 2 errors. Type 1 and type 2 errors can be directly translated to the confusion matrix. Type 1 error is nothing but false positive and type 2 error is nothing but false negative. Type 1 error or false positive scenario is considered a more critical error as compared to type 2 error and that's why significance level in hypothesis testing is based on probability of committing a type 1 error so for example type 1 error or false positive why is it a more critical error because type 1 error is the scenario where we are calling an innocent person as guilty and we always want to avoid that. It is okay to let a guilty person go, but it is really wrong to call a guilt innocent person as guilty, right? So that's that's why a type one error is considered more critical and always to be avoided as compared to a type two error. Let's look at some of the measures that are derived using the confusion matrix. The first one is called accuracy. Accuracy means how many cases were correctly classified overall. That is the number of true positives plus the number of true negatives divided by total cases. High accuracy does not always imply a good classifier. And why is that? because accuracy is dependent both on true positive and true negative so if my classifier is really good in classifying non-spam emails correctly but it is not working good in classifying spam emails correctly i'm not really achieving my goal because my goal is to classify the spam emails correctly which we can see in this example as well. My true positives are only 20 out of the 100 emails that I had, 20 emails were correctly identified to be spam. But there were 40 emails which were non-spam and they were classified as non-spam. So they were classified correctly, but they were not the spam emails which I want to identify, right? So 
in these cases where there are way too many true negatives as compared to true positives, accuracy can be a little bit misleading about how well my model is actually performing uh, when, it, when it comes to identifying, let's say, spam accounts or fake IDs or things like that, right? So uh, in this case, accuracy will be 20 plus 40 divided by 100 because that's the total number of um, records that I have and that gives me an accuracy of 60%. Then there is something called misclassification rate, which is 1 minus accuracy and in this case that will be 40%. The next term I have is called recall which is out of all cases that were truly positive, how many did we correctly classify? That is true positive divided by true positive plus false negative, right? So out of all the values that were actually positive, in reality, they are positive. How many of them were we able to correctly classify? So that's recall and recall should be high in a good classifier, right? So out of all the values that were really positive, how many did we identify correctly, you know? And in our case, in our spam email case, it will be 20 because that's the number of emails that we correctly classified as true positive divided by all the emails that were identified as, uh, sorry, divided by the true positive plus the false negative, uh, which is the total number of emails which actually are spam, right? So that is 20 divided by 20 plus 10 and it comes to 67%. And recall is also known, known as true positive rate or sensitivity. Then we have something called precision, which is out of all the cases that we classified as positive, how many are truly positive? There is a little bit of difference between recall and precision. In recall, let's go back. The denominator was all the cases that are truly positive. In precision, the denominator is all the cases that we classified as positive right so the first one is about recall is about how many cases are actually positive precision is how many we classified we as in the algorithm classified as positive right? there's a little bit of difference and that's given by true positive divided by true positive plus false positive and in our case it's going to be 20 divided by 20 plus 30 and that comes to 40 percent and even this value should be high for a good classifier and why is that because we always want our true positive to be as high as possible and then we have something called f1 score score is the harmonic mean of precision and recall so if we want to combine the qualities of precision and recall together to have one um, measure then that's f1 score f1 score helps us to find a balance between precision and recall and can be useful when high number of true negatives result in a high accuracy right so like we discussed before that sometimes high number of true negatives can result in a high accuracy but our true positives are really really low so if that's the case after creating our confusion matrix if we see that the number of true negatives are really high then instead of depending on f uh, on accuracy we can look at something like f1 score uh, which takes the precision and recall into account and gives us a measurement of our uh, models uh, performance. In our case, uh, we have all the values. We know what is precision and recall. We have the formula and if we apply that, then F1 score comes to 50%, which is actually lower than our accuracy for this model, which was uh, 60%. 
And then finally, we have a couple of other measures. Uh, the first one is called specificity, which is true negative divided by true negative plus false positive, and then false positive rate, which is one minus specificity. These are not that commonly used, but these are also uh, kind of the counterparts of the true positive rate um, and sensitivity that we saw. So in conclusion, evaluating model performance is a critical step and hence a number of different measures are used for same. Confusion matrix is one such measure and using the matrix we can quantify model performance. However, one must be careful and use the different measures such as accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score wisely and evaluate the picture as a whole rather than completely depending on any one aspect. In future videos, we will look at other measures such as ROC and AUC for model evaluation. So that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep following us on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day ahead and talk to you all soon. Thank you.